We're all about going fast around here, and we hate waiting for copying files. I mean, we make videos, so there are lots of files, they're big, and we copy them. So, and while flash drives might be quick, sometimes they're not quick enough, and they just can't hold enough stuff. So enter the USB SSD drive solution. So let's start with the Thunderbolt Drive Plus 256 gigs sent to us by the kind folks at Elgato. This is their no compromise storage, which for them means you shouldn't have to choose between convenience, data protection, and storage capacity. It also comes in a 512 gig size within the same form factor. It comes with a USB 3 micro cable and a Thunderbolt cable, and the drive is built with speed in mind. It uses an SSD to store your data, and Elgato claims it can run it speeds of up to 420 megabytes per second, which as you guys will all know is very, very high. We are going to put that to the test, however, in just a little bit. Looking at the physical unit itself, there really isn't much to it. Actually, there aren't even any indicator lights. It has a nice heft to it and weighs in at 270 grams, so it's not flimsy at all. And it's actually a full metal enclosure that's rated with IP64 ingress protection rating standard -ness. The six means complete protection against contact and protection from the infiltration of dust. And the four means that it actually is rated to be protected against splashed water, but it has exposed connectors, guys. So don't submit merge the thing. That would be a terrible idea. Obviously, because it's essentially an SSD, the drive runs silent and cool without a fan. Elgato has optimized the power draw to utilize only a single Thunderbolt or USB port without a separate power supply. And finally, they don't use just any SSD inside. The server grade controller chips inside have Plextor's TrueSpeed technology, which is their fancy version of trim that works regardless of your interface and at a hardware level. So that means that the performance doesn't degrade over time. If you didn't already know this, USB 3.0 SSDs cannot normally use the trim command because it is a SATA only feature. Also, if you're using an SSD on OS 10, only Apple SSDs are granted access to the trim command by the almighty Apple God. So true speed kind of matters there as well, but that's more on the desktop side for Plexter drives in terms of relevance. All right, so enough about this drive. If you've paid attention to this channel or Lin the Linus Tech Tips channel that I'm also on, you'll know that we've used USB SSDs in the past. In fact, we've been using this one on our side, the Angelbird SSD2 Go, for, wow, since Computex, actually. And the NCIX crew actually used one of these as well this year when they were at CES. But what if you want to DIY something? Ah, yes. What we've got here is a little bit more... Uh, you know, well, DIY, it's just a, a standard two and a half inch SATA enclosure with a USB 3 connector and then an aftermarket SSD inside. But neither of these solutions are necessarily perfect for everyone. And if you want something pocketable, there's solutions like the Kingston HyperX USB drive as well. This is the fastest USB 3 drive I've personally tested. And we're gonna be taking a look without any density advantages. So these are all 256 gig solutions at how how a USB 3.0 SSD performs against a DIY USB 3.0 SSD against another USB 3.0 SSD that has like, you know, A to A connectors and is a little bit different compared to the fastest USB 3.0 thumb drive that we've tested before. And all of that leads us to the test bench that we'll be using it on. Oh, just so you know, guys, it's a Samsung 840 Pro 256 gig that's stuffed into this very inexpensive Mediasonic 2.5 inch USB 3.0 enclosure. So this is Wheels Test Bench. He's got a bit of an older motherboard simply because we had a tough time finding a Thunderbolt motherboard uh, around the studio and this one this one happened to be there. ASUS has a bunch of stuff coming that we saw at CES, but they're not here just yet. So this is the board we were using. It's an Intel desktop board, something or other, and I don't remember. Anyway, fun fact, this is basically Intel's last high-end motherboard because they have exited the motherboard market. Uh, one thing that we 
discovered during the benchmarking process, and this is something you'll going to want to be careful with as well, is that USB 3 extension cables can throw your numbers and your performance for a loop. For the best performance, always plug directly into the back of the motherboard and then directly into the drive itself. So to test all these drives, we used the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, Crystal Disk Mark, and Addo. Editor, please pull up the graph. Mommy, wow, I've got a graph now. Do, do. Uh, starting with black magic, you'll see the general trend is that the Elgato drive pulls ahead in both reads and writes, then the Angelbird. So these are the very premium solutions, as you'll find out when we talk about praising later. <clears throat> Followed by the DIY SSD with the HyperX thumb drive coming in last. Sounds about right. Similar story with the other benchmarks, with the Elgato providing stable performance in all scenarios, while the, while the Crystal and Addo benchmark showed some variance in the way that the controller for each of these flash-based solutions behave. So, for example, uh, Kingston had very poor performance in Addo writes, and the DIY SSD wrote slightly faster in Crystal Disk Mark than it performed in terms of reads. Um, at $240, the Kingston looks like a good value, but in terms of performance, it's not not going to perform as well as the other solutions as we saw pretty much across the board and the lifespan won't be as long as an SSD based solution but if you want something that can fit on your keychain and is is pocketable these ones aren't this one is at 290 bucks so about $50 more than the Kingston thumb drive you get the DIY solution it's a great value it's a little bit more flexible in terms of like you can upgrade the SSD in it in the future for example um, to something that's higher capacity it's faster okay um, the only problem with it is that you'll need some way of performing trim if you care about getting the maximum performance out of it and you know the only way that I can really see to do that would be to actually take the drive out once in a while plug it into a SATA or eSATA connector and then manually trim it. But I think what you'll find is unless you're using it for very high performance applications, you probably won't find yourself bothering with that. Which leads us to our premium solutions. The Elgato drive here, yeah, performed really well and it's got Thunderbolt and USB 3, but it's $500. You'll be getting a business grade SSD, okay, with proper trim over USB, but it's extremely expensive. With the Angelbird, you're getting, well, you've got a couple different solutions. So this is the Duo, which actually has two drives in one and two separate interfaces, which has its own advantages and disadvantages. You're also getting extremely high performance and you're saving 50 bucks over the Elgato solution. So it basically comes down to what you guys want. Are you willing to spend that much more for really beautiful, you know, rugged aluminum or metal enclosures? Or are you just looking for raw performance and you don't care too much about the construction of it? Or finally, do you just want something that's compact and fast enough for most of your data transfers? Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I am gonna do a slightly different outro today by request, and it will be me dancing a little jig. Subscribing is good. Also like the video if you liked it. This is what happens when I try to do something other than my standard one.